Hey, welcome back Cloud Scholars. I'm your host Kieran Tross. In this video, I'm going to talk about what is Azure File Sync. And we're also going to talk about Azure File Storage in this video as well. So let's start off with talking about Azure File Sync. Azure File Sync enables centralizing your organization's file shares in Azure Files while keeping the flexibility, performance, and compatibility of a Windows file server. So basically what this definition says from Microsoft is that Azure File Sync works with your on-prem file servers. But I also want to let you know that you can also set up Azure Files storage alone and just utilize that from the cloud if you needed to do that as well. So let's talk a little bit about a scenario of using Azure File Storage slash Azure File Sync with on-prem. So here we have in this diagram, and basically what we're looking at is, we could say a finance business. And with this finance business, our main headquarters is in New York, like many businesses. And in that main headquarters in our data center, we have a file server. And we have other branches as well. And the branches are in DC, Massachusetts, South Carolina, and Virginia. And within these branches, we have uh, local servers on them as well, which is file servers. And what we want to do is we're going to be using DFS, distributed file system, in order for us to maintain the integrity of our file servers and to keep you know, uh, our data synced up throughout all our different branches. And the way that works is DFS namespace will make that replication on all servers to make sure the file is consistent amongst all the users. So our users in a Virginia office will use a server that's local to that branch. And if they make any changes, DFS will say, okay, I need to make those changes to the other sites plus corporate headquarters as well. But the cool thing about DFS is if there was a situation that happened with our Virginia office and the server went down, the users at the VA office will be connected and redirected automatically to the nearest um, file server to that um, location. But as you can imagine, think about this. If you have a business and you're like, okay, we have you know, our headquarters and we have four um, offices, right? Uh, I would say branches. And we're going to set up another branch, let's say in Florida, we would have to go through a series of steps with setting that up and then getting another file server there, setting that file server up and then getting it within our DFS namespace. Now that, you know, is how things were done. And honestly, it's still a thing. People are still doing it at the same time. But the cool thing with Azure File Storage is that it gives us flexibility and most of all mobility to, to be able to set up our business and grow and scale. And that's what Azure File Sync does. So basically what we'd be doing is instead of using that main office as our, our main point, what we're going to be doing is have Azure File Sync. And if you're going to have to set up another office, like we were talking before, like our Florida office, what we would be able to do is easily say, okay, we can set up the Florida office, get the internet set up, set up all the other stuff we need to do. But now we don't need to go about buying and racking another server. What we can do is just say, hey, we'll point our users using a GPO and we'll point our users to the cloud and they'd be able to see all their storage right there. They'd be able to access our file servers for finance, marketing, IT, you name it, they'd be able to access it. So as you can see with Azure File Sync, right? Utilizing Azure, Azure File Storage, you're able to do much more things and you're able to kind of just get things going at an easier rate. So let's talk a little bit about why you should choose Azure File Storage so that this way you can use Azure File Sync. So one, it reduces on-prem storage footprint. You don't have to worry about, you know, the old days of, you know, you got to back up your server, you're running out of space, you need to add more uh, space to that server, whether you're using NAS storage or whatever the case may be, you don't have to go through all that anymore. With Azure File Sync, 
you can use SMB and NFS file system protocols. You're still able to use the protocols that you're using. Uh, scalability and mobility, we talked about that as well uh, within the last diagram, talking about how you can easily set up another branch if you needed to do that. Uh, easily configure backups. You know, your backups are going to be used within the re uh, Azure Recovery uh, Service Vault. So what you're going to do is have a, re a recovery vault, and then you can set it up to connect to your uh, storage account. Uh, alert and reporting. You can set up alerts if you're running out of space and you're like, okay, I'm at 100 gigs, and I need to bump it up. You can set up alerts for that as well. You have versioning control, which is great. So if you have a document, document one, and you say, okay, you can see the different versions of your document. So you can have it from this week, last week, the week before. It's really about how, how back you want to have each document, right? Now, obviously, the more versioning you have, the more space you take, but that's really up to your business. And honestly, that should really be a decision that you want to incorporate compliance and legal with. And then you have access data tiers. Now, this one is really good because your access data tiers really work with that first item, which is reduce on-prem storage footprint. And the reason why you're able to reduce on-prem storage footprint is because the access data tiers. So you can have your data that you're accessing a lot, you can have that data on site. So that would be your on-prem. So now your on-prem server, you're not gonna have to say, oh, I need to have, you know, five terabytes or whatever the case may be you can now say okay i'm fine with a terabyte i'm fine with 500 gigs probably not 500 gigs but i'm fine with whatever number that you see fit for your organization and then you'd only keep the data that's in that hot tier then anything that you're not using a lot so let's say you put it in your um information to say hey you know if a, if a data if a document has been accessed for six months more than six months that goes into the cold tier and that will stay in the cloud and then also you also have an ad integration which is great now one thing i could tell you is that with ad integration is something that you would always want to use because the last thing you want to do is have a storage account with another set of credentials and that's going to cause a whole lot of more phone calls coming into the help desk because believe it or not, believe me, staff won't remember it. Um, and then also, if you're going to, you know, take down, uh, if you're, you're somebody's leaving the organization, you really should have a centralized um, location for when people enter the organization and leave the organization, right? So one thing that you'll know, like with anything in terms of any identity access management, is that you know you need to have a, a a specific point for when people are you know basically from the cradle to the grave think of it that way you know and with ad integration it really helps out because if you're shutting off and disabling an account you disable that account they don't have access to anything in your organization instead of okay you disable the account here but then you have another location where there's another user administration so that this way now you have to disable it that uh, same identity right for that person in that account as well so it's really important to have that AD integration with your Azure file storage so let's talk a little bit about access and data so with Azure uh, uh, file shares you have um, backups are done from the Azure from Azure so using recovery service vault and then uh, how users are accessing the data is uh is very seamless you know you still have that same uh backslash backslash in the file share name that you can utilize uh, data is cached locally on the file server that you need and then there's data tiers which we spoke about a little bit before which is the hot files on-prem and then cold files will stay in the cloud so what are the components to get azure file sync going so one thing about Azure File Sync, you have sync groups and server endpoints. So let's look at this diagram and let's explain everything. So storage sync service, right, is a service within Azure um, uh, uh, within Azure that you're going to use. So this way you can get going with Azure File Sync. And then what you all have is sync groups. So basically a sync group is the, is the uh, sync topology for a set of files. Endpoints within a sync group are kept in sync with each other. A sync group must contain one cloud endpoint, and then also, uh, which re represents an Azure file share, 
uh, and one or more server endpoints. So you can see in our diagram, we have a cloud endpoint, and then we also have a server endpoint. And a server endpoint represents a path on a registered server. A server can have a server endpoint in multiple sync, insert sync groups. So we also have on this in this diagram is Azure Cloud Shell. And what that does is it really does all the heavy lifting for us. So all the stuff that we're clicking on and when we say in deploy and we're setting things up, you know, on the back end of it is a bunch of PowerShell scripts. This is really getting us so that this way we can keep our data synced up in the cloud and we're able to monitor it as well. So what are the requirements for Azure File Sync? So, so Azure Storage Accounts uh, using files. So um, is SMB settings must allow SMB 3.1.1 protocol, NTLM version 2 authentication, AES 128 GCM encryption. Then you also need to have an Azure File Sync agent on your server. And then also you need to have a Windows file server in order to get this to, to work for the Azure File Sync. And then you must be in the same region as the storage account. So let me take a step back before I go into the last one. I don't want to confuse you by saying you must have a Windows file server because I know before I said you can use Azure file storage for Azure file server. So this is for Azure file sync. Azure file storage is, is just a storage um, service and you can use that because there's different ones, there's blob, there's storage, there's tables and all other stuff, right? But the thing is you can use Azure file storage, right? The file itself, storage files, I should say, you should you can use storage files. So this way you can use them for, as a file server. But in terms of Azure file sync, this works in, with your on-prem data. So I just want to make sure I, differ, I, 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 I make a solid point about that. So now here we're talking about must be in the same region as a storage account. So you need to make sure that your Azure storage um, must be in the same region um, so that this way that it can work so with your Azure file sync. So if you're in a U.S. region, it needs to be in that storage account must be in, must be in that same region. So that's what that last line means. So let's talk a little bit about frequently asked questions, right? So. I know some of them are out there. Some of you are probably thinking, hey, you know, I have some questions about um, setting this up in my environment. You know, how, how, can, how can I get this to work? So first, let's look at the first one. Uh, what if I have DFS already set up in my environment? Will it still work with Azure File Sync? Absolutely. You can still have DFS working uh, within your organization. You can still, you know, um, get that going. And then you, go, you can make sure that you have Azure File Sync as well. Remember, we were talking about the tiers. So... Uh, you could say, okay, I want, you know, all this other data that's, you know, three years or however the case may be uh, old or not being modified up in the cloud. And then I have everything else that's hot tear and I'm still utilizing DFS. Can I have domain joint and non-domain joint servers in the same sync group? Yes, a sync group can contain server endpoints that have different active directory memberships, even if they are not domain joined. Although this configuration technically works, you know, Microsoft does not re recommend this type of configuration. You got to remember, you know, with Azure File Sync, you're going to be using agents. So that's one of the reasons why you're able to get away with this, even though Microsoft says, hmm, we're not really sure about you going about doing it this way, but you can do it. If two files are changed at the same time, which file wins? Azure File Sync uses a simple conflict resolution strategy. They keep both changes to files that are changed in two endpoints at the same time. The most recent written change keeps the original file name. The older file determined by the last write time has the endpoint name and the conflict number appended to the file name. For server endpoints, the endpoint name is the name of the server. For cloud endpoints, the endpoint name is cloud. So you can, you will still have both, but it's just going to append to it. And then you can take a look and say, okay, which one do I need to keep? So there's a lot to cover when it comes to Azure File Storage and also Azure File Sync. Um, what I want to do is go through a video, a how-to video, uh, so to show you exactly how it works. So I know you may still have questions or you may still think to yourself, this is a little confusing, I'm not really sure. 
Trust me, it happens to us all. I had to look up Azure File Sync, you know, and look at videos and read documentation myself in order for me to really get an understanding of it. But it makes more sense once you put the theory and then you turn it into a practical. When you actually do the work, it starts to make more sense of how this whole setup works. So I covered a lot in this video. Um, I want to thank you for taking the time for listening to this video. If you found this information informative, um, please smash that like and subscribe button. Also, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Do not be shy. I am more than happy to hear about, you know, what your inputs are. If you're thinking, Hey, you know, can you go into more greater detail about this? Or if you're just asking a question, I'm more than happy to explain. So I want to take the time to thank you for listening to this video. If you like this video, um, like I said before, please like, and subscribe here at cloud scholars. My goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert. See you next time.